So guys, even with two losses, we were able to stay in the top 10. And had we not lost that game to Tennessee, one, we would be in the SEC championship. And two, we would more than likely be in the top five. You know what I mean? You see here, sophomore standout watchers leadership um, has him named a finalist and as a as a Maxwell Award winner. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, everything and stuff like that. So right now, the top 25 is uh, undefeated Clemson at number one, only undefeated squad, 10-2 Alabama, 11-1 UCF, 11-1 Nebraska, 10-2 Tennessee, who beat us. That's supposed to be our spot. We probably even might be a little higher because we were ranked 10, you know what I'm saying, already. Texas A&M, who actually plays Tennessee in the conference championship, Notre Dame, us, uh, Fresno State, Washington, Georgia, Oklahoma, Auburn, Purdue, Virginia Tech, Kansas, Stanford, Miami, North Carolina, Florida, Tulsa, Texas, Boston College, FAU, and Buffalo. <clears throat> now, of course, I'm sad that we didn't win, but it's also good because this is a rebuild. Yeah, we're having good seasons, but you know, we're not able to get, we're not able or ready to get over that hump yet. So I'm glad we lost the games that we lost because you know it's gonna keep us grounded and keep us striving to be good because I usually win a championship in the first two or three seasons with my teams. I still may even do that with Vanderbilt, but I want these series to go a little longer than usual. That's why the sliders are so hard and I have so many restrictions on defense and everything like that. Um, as far as the Heisman watch list, Walters is second behind Otis Anderson from UCF, uh, who, who also has a conference championship game, so that's probably a dub. Followed by Etienne, AJ Dillon, and uh, De'Eric King from Houston. So awards finalists, we got Alan Walters leading the Maxwell. Walter Camp, Alan Walters is behind Otis uh, Anderson. Uh, the uh, Ben Narek Award, Coppet is uh, leading the way with Dimitri Moore, so we're definitely gonna bring it home. The Nagurski Tid is second behind Paul. You know, Tid has 11 sacks, but he doesn't have as many tackles as Paul, and Paul has four picks. For the, excuse me, the O'Brien, um, I don't see why we're behind Trevor Lawrence there, but okay. The Walker, you know, Samson St. Brown made top 10. That's huge for him being that he doesn't have ne nearly as many yards as these dudes, but he has he has all the touchdowns. Belentnikov, Chris Pierce as a, uh, well, you know, he's he, he's he's a tight end, but, uh, you know, he's up there on the award as a receiver behind uh, the, uh, the Buffalo receiver. Let's see. Damn, he's slightly better season than him. Mackey, nobody. The Outland, we got somebody top 10. Remington, nobody. The Lombardi, Tid, is leading the way. And we have two more in the top five with Ray Meyer and Adiyangbo. Um, eight sacks, uh, six sacks, and then 11 sacks. The 11 sacks is leading the nation. Best linebacker, Dimitri Moore, is slightly behind that this year. He won it last year. Not really sure why he's not the leader this year. He doesn't have picks. He only has one forced fumble. He only has one sack. Okay. But I don't think this season is any worse than what he did last year. More tackles. Same tackles for loss. Less sacks. Less picks. More pass deflections. A forced fumble. No recoveries. And he won best linebacker in the band, Eric. Okay. The Thorpe Coppet is leading the way there. And we got Alan George in the uh, top four, top five. The Groves and Nobody. And then the guy, our punter, is in the top five. Best returner, Cam Johnson, should easily run away with that. Even though he doesn't have that many touchdowns, his yards are crazy. Now, taking a look at the uh, conference championship games, we got we got FAU versus Southern Miss. We got Tulsa versus UCF. We got Texas A&M versus Tennessee. Utah State versus Hawaii. Arizona at Stanford. North Carolina at Clemson. Ohio State at Nebraska. And Ball State at Buffalo. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start simulating some of these games. We're going to simulate these games. I want to see who's going to win. 
Matter of fact, let me go turn auto save off so we can get through it a little bit quicker. All right, so first game, Southern Miss versus uh, FAU. FAU blows Southern Miss out. They just blew uh, UAB out in the conference championship game yesterday. Tulsa versus UCF. Let's see. UCF needs to win this. And UCF gets upset. They will not be going to the national championship. Okay, Tulsa comes through winning this game by three. Texas A&M versus Tennessee. Come on, Texas A&M. I beat y'all already, but they blow Tennessee out. Okay. So Tennessee gets what they deserve, man. I'm so tight that we lost to them, bro. Y'all have no idea. We definitely would have beat A&M. Utah State versus Hawaii. Hawaii got blown out yesterday by Boise State, but they win here in the Mountain West Championship. Arizona versus Stanford. Stanford is the ranked squad, but that means nothing as they lose to Arizona by 16. North Carolina versus Clemson. Can North Carolina play spoiler? They are unable to. They get blown out 42 to 14. Ohio State versus Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska is the better team this year. Who would have saw that over Ohio State? But Ohio State still finds a way to get a W. Wow, we would have definitely had a chance to get into the championship. And then Ball State versus Buffalo. Buffalo newly into the top 25. And I guess we won't find out who wins that game until we move the week as I kick my mic. My apologies. Damn. Is it still working? Test, test. Yeah, so I'm not sure who won that game. Is going ahead and moving the week. But... We got to see Tennessee lose, so that definitely makes me feel good. All right, so all right, they are they already tell us what bowl we're in. So we're we're in the Capital One Bowl taking on Nebraska. Allen Walters ends up falling to number three in Heisman voting. Travis Etienne, um, uh, you know, come emerges late with the conference championship game and gets himself a Heisman here in his senior year. Okay, Allen Walters had a decent season though. Like I said, we will be taking on Nebraska. In the Capital One Bowl, because we weren't in our conference championship, and even though we're number four in the nation, we will not be representing SEC in a BCS Bowl game, which kind of sucks, but we do have a January one bowl game, which is definitely a good look, and we get to play in sunny Orlando, Florida, and we get to take on Nebraska, who got their their cheeks clapped in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Big Ten um, Conference Championship. Alan Walters is able to walk away with the Maxwell Award. All right, go ahead and add that. Frank Coppett walks away with the Chuck Bednarik. Cameron um, Tidd actually uh, also walks away with the Lombardi. Coppett walks away with the Jim Thorpe. Cam Johnson walks away with Returner of the Year. So we just racked up a lot of stuff. Thought we were going to get Coach of the Year. We were a finalist, but, you know, that was not the case. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, the final... You know what I'm saying? Before, well, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the award winners. We, we got the Maxwell, Walter Camp goes to Otis Anderson, Ben Rick, we got that. Nagurski, Tid just was just fell short from winning that from Paul in his senior season, but he might have got himself drafted the way he played. O'Brien, we lose to Trevor Lawrence, Walker, Otis Anderson, Easy Money, Belentnikov, Pierce just misses out, Mackey goes to Letton out of Troy, which is crazy though. Because I feel like we should have won the Mackey. We should have easily won that with Chris Pierce. But it is what it is. Outland goes to Donaldson to Miami. Remington goes to Buffalo. Lombardi goes to us. Best linebacker. We had two people in the top five. Three in the top ten. Check out the true freshman Uriah Rice in the top ten for best linebacker. The Thorpe Coppin ran away with that. The Groza, Groza goes to Florida. And then the guy goes to Auburn. Best returner. Once again, we already won that. Now, as far as All-Americans... Uh, Clemson has quarterback and the running back. Do we have any first team All Americans? Tid is the first team All American. Dimitri Moore is a first team All American once again. Frank Coppett is a first team All American in his senior season. And Cam Johnson, the redshirt sophomore, is an All American as well. Second team? Wow, that's trash. Walters doesn't get second team All American. Okay. Pierce is a second team All American. He should have been a first. Adi Yangbo, second team All American. Haney and George, second team All-Americans. Freshman All-American, John Rodriguez is a raw receiver. He's going to represent us there. Uriah Rice, true freshman, of course, uh, All-American. And now we're going to go to All-Conference. Alan Walter, Samson, St. Brown, Chris Pierce, Cam Johnson, defensive side of the ball, Adiangbo, Tid, Moore, Hebert, Haney, Coppett. And for some reason, we won returner. We were the, the first team all All-American returner. But we don't get the first team all SEC returner. 
And uh, second team all conference, we get George, we get Reitmeyer, and Shavers doesn't. Oh, wait. Cam Johnson doesn't get returner in the conference because he's all conference receiver. So my bad. That's actually definitely better. The deciding top 25, Clemson, Bama, SEC, I mean, national championship. Alabama, you know what I'm saying? Two losses. They don't even go to the conference championship, but they lost at the right time. They lost to Texas A&M early, and they lost to uh, Tennessee early enough to where they were able to, you know, uh, overcompensate, you know, and get and get and get the nod. I feel like Texas A&M should have jumped them, especially since Texas A&M beat them and won the SEC championship, which would would which is what would probably would have happened in real life. But you know, this game is based off of the old, you know, what I mean, voting system when it comes to that. We're uh, so basically Clemson, Bama, A&M, Notre Dame, us, Fresno State, UCF, Washington, Georgia, Nebraska, who we take on, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Auburn, Purdue, Virginia Tech, Kansas, Miami, Tulsa, Florida, Texas, Ohio State, Boston College, FAU, Buffalo, and UConn at 9-3 just jumps into the top 25. So notable bowl games. National Championship, we already discussed, Clem Clemma, Clemson and Bama. Buffalo has a, a, a January bowl against uh, uh, ULM. Go Daddy Bowl, Northern Illinois, USA. The Cotton Bowl, Georgia versus Oklahoma. Notre Dame versus Fresno State in the Orange Bowl. Texas A&M versus UCF in the Sugar Bowl. Kansas versus Tulsa in the Fiesta Bowl. Rose Bowl is Ohio State at 8-5, but they won their conference against a 9-4 Arizona. Outback Bowl is Tennessee versus Purdue. Uh, Capital One Bowl, of course, is us versus Nebraska. Florida, Michigan State in the Gator Bowl. Ole Miss, FAU. Auburn, Miami in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. That's lit in, in, in Atlanta. Penn State, Kansas State, um, Houston, Washington State, Illinois, Baylor, UConn, and uh, UNC, LSU, Florida State. So we got some good bowl games coming up. And check out UMass becoming bowl eligible at 6-6. Six and six. So looking at our matchup ahead of us, Curse rolling with us. They're slightly better at B+, plus, A-B+. minus B plus. We're B, B-B-B. minus B. Top scoring offense in the nation. Top three uh, total offense. Top pass offense. Still number one in the nation in rush defense. Turnover differential is still Garbito. Nebraska is plus 13. Our leaders, Cameron Walters, I mean, Allen Walters, 41 touchdowns to 21 picks. Got to clean that up next year if he's still the starter. Samson St. Brown could possibly go over 1,000 yards in this bowl game and get his 20th touchdown. Chris Pierce, 84 catches, basically almost 1,300 yards, 15 yards of carry, 15 touchdowns. Dimitri Moore leads us in tackles with 76. Coppett leads us in picks with five and 11 sacks with by Tid. Nebraska, uh, Martinez, 2,500 yards, 26 touchdowns, only four picks. Washington almost running for 1,200 yards, 60 yards a carry, 14 touchdowns. Spillman is a decent receiver, 17 yards a catch, 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. Doman leads them in tackles. Bottle, Boodle leads them in, in picks, and Steele leads them in sacks. We already know our schedule. We lost to Bowling Green, and we lost late to Tennessee. Nebraska lost to Ohio State twice. They lost to them in the middle of the season, then they lost to them again in the conference championship. So the tables are set for the postseason. Next episode, of course, we will be taking care of the bowl game. Hopefully, we can come out here, get a W against Nebraska, and prove the 2-0 in the bowls, and get ready to ramp up for next season, head into the offseason, and start season number three. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you did, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy, Uncle Sam's Reject, RKGames.com. I'm out of here. Bitch. I want to give a special shout out to our Heisman sponsors, Isaac Johnson and AJO926.